Hi everybody, welcome back to Moscone South. We're here with theCUBE's continuous coverage of Snowflake Summit 2024. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with George Gilbert. Rebecca Knight is also in the house and we're really pleased to have Baris Gultekin, he's the head of AI at Snowflake. How did you get that job? Nobody else must have wanted that one. Wow, that must have been a line out the, the door to, to get that title. So congratulations on that. And Mukesh Dubey, who's the product management and architecture lead uh, for data and commercial platforms at Bayer, US LLC, up from New Jersey. Thanks so much, guys, for spending time on theCUBE. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thanks so seriously, man, that is the head of AI. Wow, that is, you must be a really popular person. <laughs> I, I'm very lucky to be here. Yeah, yeah. Be, I'm sure you feel fortunate. So, um, yeah, I'm sure you've been busy lately too. You guys have had a lot of announcements and um, we're going to get into them, but how's the show been? What are some of the takeaways that we should be focusing on? I, I am pumped. I, I love the energy. I love talking to customers, uh, just announcing all the products that we've been working hard on and making that uh, you know, be visible and, and, and you know, getting them on the hands of customers have been wonderful. So I'm, I'm really enjoying being here. What, what are some of the things that the audience should know about that you're most proud of? Um, so we've announced three major products uh, this week. Uh, one is uh, Cortex fine tuning. So Cortex has had a series of models you know, that are kind of best in class and now our customers can take these models and then customize them for their needs in a very simple interface. Uh, this makes these models uh, you know, both uh, increasing their accuracy for that specific need as well as reducing the cost. So very excited about Cortex fine tuning and how simple it is. And then on top of this, the two major use cases of AI has been um, talking to your data, either talking to your documents from an unstructured data perspective or talking to your crown jewels, your structured data. And we've announced two products for those. One is uh, Cortex Search. Cortex Search allows you to search through your data so that you can build RAG applications. And then the other one is Cortex Analyst, allowing you to build business intelligence type applications talking to your structured data. All right, so we're going to come back to that, but this is a cube first, I think, that we've had two Mukeshes on back to back. I don't think this ever happened in the uh. history of the Cube. <laughs> so welcome. So tell us about your role uh, at, at Bayer. Interesting title, product management, architecture lead, yeah. data, yeah. commercial platforms, you got it all going on. Yeah, yeah, uh, a little bit of journey in my career, right? Because I was doing the CRM, commercial platform implementations, and I focus on data. So pretty interesting mix here, yeah? But in my current, uh, uh, I will say responsibility, I do two things. One is having a workable architecture for data management and analytics, that is one. So the tools and technology part of it, and second one is data governance, yeah, which a lot of people uh, will, that's the foundation for any of the AI product basically, right? So I have two uh, splits, and that is what I do. So, zooming out at just a high level, when you think about Bayer's AI strategy, every company of course has an AI strategy, how would you describe that strategy, if you can, speak to that. Yeah. Um, and, and how's it going? I have some follow-up questions, but I'll just I'll start there. So overall in any of the big companies basically, right, so the legacy or the traditional, I will say AI functions, it's always there, yeah? And I think in the today's world, the point is how easily and optimally and I will say operationally, sustainably, it can be done. There is a focus on that basically, right? So if I take an example of use cases, right, so we have three divisions out there, yeah? And in all divisions, the AI, the traditional AI is always used either to create a better product or to optimize the process, either it is customer services or product supply or demand planning, whatever it is basically, right? So that all is there, okay? The, tech, the company has been using it. I think the main thing that is popping up or the new tool in the, in, in the box is generative AI, yeah? And I think we can a little bit talk about that. The point here is that how we can use this technology in multiple segments and generate value out of that, yeah? So I focus on data analytics at this point of time, so I will talk about little of the use case that we are focusing on to generate the value for our, uh, I will say, uh, the, the people who are using the platform to take decision faster, so more to come. Okay, so your scope, we can, we can keep it yes. narrow on your scope. Would you characterize where you're at today as predominantly still trying to figure out, experimenting, you know, testing, part A of the question, and the second question is, how are you funding it? Are you stealing from other budgets? Uh, or is it incremental uh, funds that you're getting from your yeah. CFO? So, so it's an interesting question basically, right? So when we are having the big scale AI products or projects, it has to be funded, yeah? Uh, we have to figure out what we are trying to achieve. But 
the use case that I will be talking about is Cortex Analyst. And I can tell you, yeah, it just took my time and a couple of hours to build a workable product. It's no major funding, okay? I just used existing resource, some of my time, and build a product that is workable. I just released a pilot for that in a small group of my level two organization. They are playing with it, and I will get a feedback like this week when I go back on Friday. So that is what we are talking this about. This is amazing because our data shows that with our partner ETR that 40% of the customers tell us that they're stealing from other budgets to fund AI. If, if you're saying, Mukesh, you can do it on weekends and nights, yes. you don't have to ask for funding. Go ahead, George. So, so uh, elaborating on this, tell us maybe the, the types of questions you are expecting um, your internal customers to ask or that they're already asking and then, and then adding, you know, how do you um, define the data in a way that the um, Cortex search and Cortex analyst, um, well, in, in this case, Cortex analyst knows how to navigate it. Yeah, yeah, so let's try to understand, right? So I was, I was having a pleasure to work with Peter, uh, the product manager for this Cortex analyst for a while, and when we saw the first version, so it was a cycle when the product has evolved basically, right? So in our, in my community of user, I divide into three levels. Level one is somebody like me who understands data, who understands technology, yeah? My level two users are my data analysts from the business. They know data in and out, yeah? But they're Excel guys, think of that, yeah? But they can see data at the top level and at the bottom level. And the third user community for us will be our people who are running the show, running the business basically, right? So the VPs of sales, yeah, let's say that. So these are the community that we're talking about. So how we approached it, once I was convinced that the product that we are talking about in the analytics world, it is ready to be used. And one thing I want to mention it, right? In analytics world, when we are talking about the regular structured data, it has to be a binary product. Either it works or it did not work, yeah? If I'm asking what is my sales, in five different ways, I need to see one number. That is important. It cannot be that, okay, three times it is something giving me wrong number, that is, that is no go at all, yeah? So first thing, that was my part to do, okay? I was convinced that this thing can give me a binary positive answer, and that is we move forward. The second thing that we did was that we identified a vertical, a functional vertical, like sales basically, right? So think of, so I focus on consumer health goods. So what does it mean is we are selling Aleve, Aspirin, yeah, and Clarity in those kind of products basically, yeah? So when my sales VP want to see the numbers, there are a few things that somebody will ask, okay? What is my customer p &L? Simple, yeah? What is my orders in pipeline? And what is my market share? How, how the categories are doing as per, as for me and my, my like entire market? So those are the basic questions that a sales VP will ask. So what we did is we take this functional vertical and the good thing that we have done is we have a governed data set, yeah? So we have the data models and this is good that we spent some time like two years back and on this data model, all the core metrics are already calculated, and any BI application, either it is a BI application A, B, or C, everything sits on top of that, yeah? And what we have done is, we have taken this Cortex analyst and just make it available on top of this models, the data models, yeah? And focus on one vertical of, like, sales, and just expose it out. So that is what we have done. So Barris, this is interesting because again, the other thing that our data tells us is that people spend all their time getting their data ready, yes. uh, making sure it's trusted and yes. accurate, high quality. So when we hear these uh, phrases like bring AI to the data, yes. sounds good, but this is actually a, a good example. You got to be loving this conversation. Yeah. I, I am, I am. This is, this is fantastic <laughs> to me. What we've focused on <clears throat> to, to make the AI accessible is we focus on making it super easy, but also very efficient and trusted. You know, uh, everything is built from the ground up from a trust perspective. Uh, all the access controls are respected. And then we've made this super simple to use. Um, we showed in the keynote how Cortex Search is easy to use. Uh, anyone who doesn't even know how to use Snowflake can come in and then build a chatbot very easily. In the case of text to SQL, in the case of talking to structured data with Cortex Analyst, you have a much more important task and a much more challenging task from a technology perspective, and we've simplified it tremendously. We've created an API that provides a state-of-the-art uh, capability to be able to create um, chatbots to talk to your structured data. Um, this is, um, you know, 
thanks to you know, four billion plus queries that Snowflake uh, sees on a daily basis, we've built this platform uh, that is providing very high quality, high accuracy answers, but also the platform knows when not to answer the question, when to ask for clarifications, and that's the key when it comes to enterprise AI. So, um, when, when someone comes in, you, it sounds like you have multiple BI tools, but you did the work of doing the data modeling all the way down to the, the, the data products and the metrics in the data, not in the tool. That's correct. So that makes it easy for yes. the Cortex analyst. Um, so then I, I guess that sounds like the, the BI tools, they could interoperate um, because you've done the work in Snowflake, but for other other companies that do some of the, the modeling work in the BI tool, they would be in I, islands yes. of, of data. Yes. Okay, and so then this is where, so Cortex really shines when, when it, the data is all harmonized. Yes. Okay. I think one thing, one thing I will always say is your AI application can go only that far as long your data foundation is strong, yeah? And if it is not, you took an example basically, right? Somebody took an, uh, an analytics application, A, they did all the calculations or metrics calculation in that. Yeah. And somebody's doing it in B, numbers are not matching. It will never match. So it's a problem at the foundation. It's a problem in the concept. And if that approach is taken, then it, it, the technology is basically working, but foundationally, fundamentally, right, the setup is, is not accurate, yeah. So how, how do you see this rolling out you, 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 it sounds like you did the data for you know, the sales function. Yes. Like how do you see then, have you already modeled the data for the other functions and then you yes. just now have to roll out the chat yes. functionality? Yes. And then how pervasive do you see this? Like how many users, how often are they using it? Do they not bother with dashboards because they just ask questions on demand? So one bold statement I'm going to give right now basically, right? This is just a starting and from my view where I'm seeing this, so capabilities like uh, Cortex Analytics, it is going to disrupt entire analytics market at least by 40%, okay? Because right now what is happening is if you see on the ground, okay? People are building dashboard in A application, in dashboard B application, and again, I will take the person of sales VP. He just need to know the sales numbers. That is all I need to know, yeah? And the same content is being developed in so many analytics applications and then people are building the catalog of all the dashboards, yeah? And, um, and then you have to train somebody, right? And if there is a new metrics that is included, then it has to be included. There is an operations teams who are managing all this dashboard. When the answer uh, or the information in the dashboard has to be changed, then there is a development cycle. So there is so much of wastage that is, so there is certainly a value, okay? If I want to see a cross simple dashboard, yeah, it will exist for some time. But there is, for the self-service analytics and some use cases, there is a lot of wastage, I will call it, that is happening currently, and this space has not been disrupted, okay? <laughs> yeah. The data management has been disrupted, but this analytics space has not been disrupted, according to me, for a period of time. I've been seeing like this approach for so long, and this is the time that it's going to disrupt. 30 to 40% content creation on dashboard, it's going to just gone away, yeah? Right. We've created an entire industry around this just yes. to solve the problem with yes. humans. Yes. We've seen it, and if, yes. and if one thing goes wrong, it's got to go back to yes. some hyper-specialized individual has to fix, every, the whole thing comes to a grinding halt. Yes. And you're saying that's 30 to 40% disruption, and then over time, maybe the whole thing gets, gets blown away. But th this is the debate that we're having in the marketplace today. Yes. It's like, oh yeah, well you got to put it into Snowflake. Well yeah because the benefit, right? And so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, you very clearly have said, we're going to do this because we have a business outcome that we care about. Others maybe have religion around some other things. We'll see how this market plays out, but, but that to me, George, is, is sort of sums up the value prop. Yeah. Um, and as I say, we'll see how it plays out. Are, are you expecting to reach people who do not currently use business intelligence products now? Yes. Like, yes. so maybe everyone in the organization becomes yes. a consumer. And, and that is a, a very good question to ask, yep. and it's a, it's a very good thing to understand, right? Any product adoption will happen if it is simple. 
Yeah, any architecture or any speed, anything will happen if it is simple. Either it is an architecture or it is a process to consume the information or for process to build, whatever. It has, everything has to be simple, yeah? Then innovation happens basically, right? And just to specifically that, that is going to happen. If I have a simple interface, yeah? And somebody can come in and ask the question in whatever they are looking for, but the data set is said, right? As, as, as it was said that these models or the, the framework is good enough that it knows that it can answer or it cannot answer. It's a binary product basically, right? But if it can answer, then interface is pretty straightforward, yeah? You can ask, give me my, so you are a, let's say I am a sales VP or you are a sales VP. You can ask the high level numbers, how is my brand doing at particular retailer, let's say that. But then my level two analyst want to see a low level data, right? So they can ask the question in that context and with the same UI, we are able to manage two personas. That is very powerful. Okay. And, and so, okay, so a business user, that's, and that's what Benoit told us, this is like his vision, he wants to see this. But a business user can speak in a natural language, ask a question, um, do what ifs, right? Do you there yet? You know, say, hey, well, you, know, you know, what if X, Y, Z happens in, my, in this territory? What's going to be the impact? Are you, are you close to that point? Yeah, no, no, not yet. Not yet in this product basically, right? But I think that is the next thing. So what if analysis and all that stuff, it is not part of this, but we do in a separate, uh, let's say, application or the product that we have developed. This is, at this point of time, is breaking, uh, what you say, uh, the wastage of analytics, let's say that, yeah? And simplifying that self-service analytics completely. So this is a revolution in that, and I think it is a longer journey, right? As I see the product evolution, there will be agents, yeah? And, <laughs> and, the, and, and if everything is simplified, you can create binary agent that can give you a binary answer, and then you can integrate your generative AI and the old-fashioned AI together and create some of the tremendous product. It, it, it will happen, I can see that happening. So, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, lot, lot, lot to how, come. How, will you, how, will you, how do you see supporting that vision and evolving so, agents are all the rage. That's the next chapter in, in AI. Um, in this example, when um, there are questions like what if questions, and the company has already in, you know, invested heavily in, in the uh, you know, traditional machine learning, they already have tools, AI is now learning how to use those tools to answer these questions. And that's, that's the next chapter with the agent models. So AI will know how to call these agents, how to call these tools, and then get the response and uh, reason about it and uh, give, give that back to the user. That library of, of AI, of LLMs that you showed on the stage today, do you see that as just shifting over time or do you see each of those that you've kind of bet on today, it, it, you bet on them for a particular reason, their, their ability to do certain things today, do you think that they'll evolve? Um, I mean, I know they'll evolve, but do you think that, that they will have their place like indefinitely inside of Snowflake, or do you think it's going to be more, well, just plug in this model today or that model? How do you think that'll play out? So, models will definitely evolve, um, and they're evolving in two different dimensions. One, general purpose models will get better and better, uh, be able to reason more, uh, be able to call tools with more uh, you know, uh, quality and predictability. Um, in addition, there is going to be an emergence of you know, specific, task-specific models that do a great job, but with uh, much lower cost and with much higher uh, efficiency. So I'll, I'll, we see both of those. In addition, what we're seeing is our customers want simplicity on top of all of this. So rather than having to figure out which model to choose, they want to use a product like Cortex Analyst or Cortex Search, where that product figures out what model to use behind the scenes, but they're focusing on the business outcomes. They're focusing on how to integrate all of this into their uh, workflows, into their tools that they've built. So your answer to me would, you don't have to worry about that, Dave. We'll take care of it, right? And you, I mean, basically, right? And, you, it, and you're the experts at this at the back end, and a user just gets an answer. Ease of use is at the core of what Snowflake does, so we'd like to make it very, very simple for our customers to use AI. Do you think those general purpose models, there's a debate about whether or not they'll get commoditized. Do you, do you have a point of view on that? It's still early. We're seeing that the scaling laws are still working. You know, that there's right. still a tremendous amount of uh, you know, compute being thrown at these models to train them, and then they keep getting better. Um, of course, you have the likes of uh, Llama 3, for instance, from Meta, uh, that, that, that's released as a very capable model, but open source, which pushes the cost down for, uh, you know, compared to all the proprietary models. 
Um, how the market is going to play out is anybody's guess. Uh, and uh, what we'd like to do at Snowflake is to provide choice to the customers um, so that they can choose the best models for themselves. And then we could choose the best ones for them while keeping uh, focus on efficiency and ease of use. You think somebody at Bayer will develop their own LLM? No, you wouldn't do it in your analytics business, but would somebody else in research maybe, or, or no uh, way? I, I don't think so, yeah. I think uh, somebody like me, or uh, maybe we, we may a little bit, I will, I will not say completely retrain, but extend the model uh, if we need to on some of the company data, but we will, I doubt that we will be uh, what you say, completely building a new model and completely training it on, it, it does not make sense, yeah? When it comes to the LLM model capabilities or the foundation model capabilities. I think what we will be doing is, or at least from my perspective, what we will be uh, focusing on is using these capabilities and building the product that we just talked about uh, as an example basically, right? Which is uh, solving the problem for us, yeah? That is where the art is, yeah? We'll be focusing on that art, yeah? and using the capability of the platform uh, uh, to combine all the Legos together in a simplistic manner to produce the product. So I think we'll playing in that art, at least from my side. Do you have a question? I'm good. Okay. I, think well, I'm well, I have more. Okay. Well, last question. 12 months from now, you're at Snowflake Summit 2025, maybe in San Francisco, I hope. Um, and I love it being here. Not that I have anything against Vegas, but I go to Vegas too much. What do you want to be able to say, Barris, 12 months from now that you can't say today? And then I'll ask you the same question. Yeah. I want to see a ton of success stories from our customers. Like Bayer is fantastic. I want to see lots of Bayers you know, taking full advantage of the products that we put out there and uh, putting them in production and you know, lots of success stories. I am also expecting that the next set of announcements from a product perspective are going to do with uh, taking action. So now that you have all this AI that can synthesize information, the next stage is taking action. Thank you, okay, what about you, Mikesh? So, So from my side, I think I told the product that we are doing, it's in the pilot phase, and I'm giving the commitment or I'm giving a sense, right, that it will disrupt the market analytics 40 to 30 to 40%. So next year, I would love to come back and confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and spread it in more verticals. Yeah, uh, demand planning, product supply, entire commercial uh, 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 space, and really would love to come back and say, see, uh, our prediction was right. Yeah, this thing is working. Because it's already self-funding, from what you told me. Because as you basically do it on your spare time, yeah. but uh, but but you can't scale. I mean, uh, uh, and, no, and, 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 until. Right, then it becomes self-funding, what you're just describing now. Yeah. If you're disrupting 30 to 40%, that is throwing yeah. cash back into the business that you can, you can gain share and yes. then put more resource into it, and yes. then that's how you get, yeah. because you can't just you know, scale Mukesh, right? Yeah, uh, well, because I think you need to understand the tough part here is data management, okay? Explain that. So when I say data management, making sure that whatever information data is giving, whatever the KPI is calculating, whatever the, the new data is coming in is all running smooth. Your numbers on the data models are accurate and it is trustable. That is the first thing, okay? If somebody can crack that, that, that is where the energy goes into and with the capability currently, yeah, with the Snowflake, putting this uh, Cortex analyst as an example to interact with the data, it's not a big deal, yeah? It's just, you have an Streamlit app which gives the front end right on the platform. I don't have to stand up a server for that and have an operations team for that. You can think of how much powerful is that, right? So a front-end application is directly on the platform. The LLM model is directly on the platform. The data modeling and data, data governance, that is a crux. If somebody can crack that, because there is no, it's an art. Again, data modeling is an art, okay? You need to put a governance on that, yeah? No technology will come in and say that, hey, uh, uh, you need to put people around that, you need to put processes around that, you need to have a group who is managing that, yeah? So, I don't know at this point of time how technology will solve it, it can help it, but that is a core problem, that is a core where energy has to go, but building this capability of interacting with this, it's. It's made straight, it's made easy now basically, yeah? And it can be expanded. As long as the data platform is there, the other parts can it's be good, expanded. Good next challenge for you, Barris. Take the AI and make it 
apply it to art. It, this, this is music <laughs> to my ears. You yeah. know, we like saying um, like there is no AI strategy without a data strategy, and this is exactly it. You need to have a solid data foundation, and that is why for Snowflake it makes a lot of sense to have having had the data uh, strategy, bringing AI right next to it. Guys, exciting times. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thanks for having All us. All right, for, uh, for George Gilbert and Rebecca Knight, this is Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of Snowflake Summit 2024 from Moscone. We'll be right back right after this short break.